Thanks for having me today, and congratulations to you on your accomplishments. It's about 2.15 on May 18th, and Mount Union is still better than John Carroll. There's a, there's a Robert Frost poem that says, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. The intent of this poem is that you need to choose between going your own way or following the crowd. But I truly believe that each of you has taken your own road to get here. Look around. The individual roads you took, and I don't mean the Turnpike or State Street, led you to this moment. And it was a different road for each of you. So I'm going to spend a few moments today with you talking about the roads ahead. And if you look bored, I swear I'll talk longer because I have a microphone in all day. So look alive. <laughs> when I was eight years old, I had big dreams. I wanted to be a cat trainer. Not lions and tigers, kitties. That dream ended early because the Schuler household did not have a cat. So how does someone get over that kind of disappointment? How did I find the strength to go on? I just needed to take a different road. Commencement is a mile marker on your road the opportunity to create your own path. It's okay to leave at the side of the road all that you want to. All the mistakes and errors don't matter anymore. What matters is your departing degree in hand. Unless, of course, all your mistakes are on Facebook or social media, then you are so screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Those will be there forever, remember that. All right? Graduation allows the opportunity to put the past in perspective, choose which moments to remember, and which to chalk up to bumps in your road. Remember, if you look behind too much, you're just going to run into a ditch. If you were like me in college, you take great comfort in knowing the road I started on is definitely not the road I ended on. My freshman year, I was on the edge of academic probation, had to leave stupid Senate due to grades, and quit the soccer team in a hissy fit. I was what you'd call a hot mess. Yet I was able to turn around slowly, got back on the team in Senate, although Dr. Er, Coach Karras would say I was still terrible, but I was back on the team. And ultimately, I am here today. On the road to success and happiness, there's no magic secret. And anyone who says differently is a big, fat liar, because it's hard, OK? In my case, it was persistence, putting some work in, trial and error, getting over myself, and definitely having a sense of humor, and then trying to be fair and honest with anybody I worked with or for. If you take a direction on your road that gets you lost, then do something about it. If your job doesn't give you all the happiness in the world, find it in other ways. I read a quote once that talked about waking up in the morning and being blessed with 24 hours each day. Use each hour on your road. Don't spend all your time at work to find success. It isn't just defined by your job. It happens by being a good person and being well-rounded outside of the workplace. Something happens in your road. You figure it out. You find people who believe in you more than you do. You didn't get through Mount without having those people in your life. And you need to tell them, don't wait, because there may not ever be another chance. Make sure today you thank them, whether it's a professor, a coach, a friend, or a family member. Tell them today. I was blessed with many people like that on my road at Mount Union. Reverend Marty Kasperlis, who taught me that random acts of kindness are a forever thing, and giving back to the community and compassion and remembering where you came from is a forever thing. She also taught me don't apologize for being you, although sometimes probably should, but none. <laughs> Dr. Richard Doyle. He was brilliant, intimidating, stubborn, and cared about his students. He also liked a good beer and a burger at the hood. He came into my life when I was floundering, and he wouldn't put up with any of my nonsense. I don't know is not an answer, Ms. Schuler. Just figure it out. When I had to leave early for a soccer game, he asked me, are you here to play soccer or get an education? Before I could respond with what was clearly the wrong answer, he said, don't answer that. You'll do both. When I came to class the next day, I was really worried. He asked me, did you win? I said, no. Did you knock anyone down? I told him lots of people. <laughs> he said, good. And then he told me to sit down and start learning. I still hear him telling me that irregardless is not a word, no matter how many times you try to use it in a sentence. <laughs> I ran for class president mostly so I could vote for great teacher. He won the award that year, and I think I was prouder of that than I was at graduation. It was the only way to thank him. Not a moment too soon, because he died the next year. But he died knowing how much his students appreciate him. So make sure you tell all those people in your life. Sometimes, just when you think you finally have it figured it out, life throws you a curve. What to do? You need to figure it out. I finally had my future planned and on course before graduation, but had to make some changes. So what do you do when you're about to graduate with a bunch of student loans? You go to grad school and take more loans. <laughs> and then you figure it out. 
I worked part-time jobs to get through grad school, took a job at a health insurance company, and the rest is history. Turns out some people are better at work than school. What it is isn't what it has to be. You might not end up where you expected, but sometimes it's where you should be. There's no shame in failure, but there is shame in letting it define you. Life is about plan B, or for some of us, C, D, and E. On your road, you will find you are better than you think in so many ways. And then you'll find that you're worse than you think, sometimes too. But you handle those mistakes and how you do it, how you handle those disappointments, that's what defines you. When I interviewed for my first job at Invacare, I was an hour and a half late, went to three wrong buildings, and had to be escorted to security to the right building. And the people on the bus when I was stuck in traffic were asking me pretend interview questions to help me. I got the job. But my boss told me later I got the job because it didn't rattle me. Makes me laugh because it couldn't rattle me. I've done worse. <laughs> I've called the CEO by the wrong name in his office twice. <laughs> and you know what? Nobody died. Nobody got fired, although for a minute there, it was a little questionable. You move on. On my first business trip, I drove two hours the wrong direction. <laughs> had to deal with the customer at the other end. You had to figure it out. And no, I never told my boss. I just, not a good idea. Um, clearly, you need to have a sense of humor on your road. Take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Let me be clear, the working world is not all unicorns and double rainbows. Your parents will tell you that. Nothing's as easy as you want it to be, and the road you end up on is likely not the one that you thought you would take. If you encounter obstacles or short-term failures, I'm reminded of the quote, do not be discouraged. Everyone who got where he is started where he was. And guess what? Your first job's not gonna be your last job. Deal with it, learn from it. You need health insurance and a paycheck, paid vacation and sick days. Think about it, they pay you to be sick. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> It's a lot easier to look for that perfect job when you have a job. And if you think you're done with general requirements now that you've graduated, wrong. Work is one big general requirement. Half your job is something you have to do, not choose to do. But here's the funny things. Sometimes you learn to love those general requirements, and it strikes a lifelong passion. For example, I had to take an art class at Mount. I was terrible. I mean, my work looked like a second grader. My professor said she'd never seen anyone try so hard. That's professor talk for you suck. <laughs> I'm now hooked on watercolors. I love to paint. The artwork's a little disturbing, I'm not gonna lie. But I found something I love to do because I had to do something I didn't want to do. And that's how it's gonna be on your road. The things you don't want to do are often the things that end up working out the best. I have no doubt you will find success, but much like what you've experienced at school, success comes with challenges too. Do you remember that classmate that was always jealous of you when you had a better grade or beat them at something? You'll have coworkers that are even worse. You need to take advantage of opportunities, not people. And you're gonna be the youngest in the workplace for a while. And there's gonna be some people that are gonna be bitter bunnies about that. Deal with it. To quote the great Taylor Swift, hater, <laughs> hater's gonna hate, so shake it off. Those haters may end up being your boss someday, so you're gonna have to deal with it. But if you are really lucky, you get to be their boss, and it's awesome. <laughs> On your road, surround yourself with people who challenge you and make you better. Of my group of friends, I was clearly the worst student, and it made me want to do better. Not because I was jealous and wanted to beat them, but because I didn't want to be the stupid friend. They made me better. But don't ever con compare your success on your road to someone else. That's a dangerous game to play. What is success to them may not be success to you, and don't forget that. There's also a quote that says, to, much, to whom much is given, much is expected. You have an obligation to give back. Not just money, although Mount Union will always take your money. <laughs> That's for you, the advancement department. You have an obligation to give of your time and volunteer where you can to make your community and your company a better place. You have an obligation to continue to make your family and friends proud, just like you're doing today. And never forget where you came from. I'm the daughter of a single mother who worked hard to put me through school and to keep me on the right path. I can't imagine how hard that was because I clearly can be a piece of work. But when you get a chance to pay forward the opportunities I was given from her sacrifices and what Mount did for me, I always will. And I'm blessed to be able to come full circle and help where I can here, but also at my local high school. And as a heads up, your parents will always still be the boss. When I'm being especially sassy, my mom still tells me, you may be a VP of work, but around here, I'm the boss. <laughs>
Go forth on your road, do great things, but do them in a way that you and those supported you will be proud. Don't be that jerk who rides bumpers on the road or cuts people off so he can get there a minute early. But don't be that timid driver that lets 22 cars turn ahead of you either. Stand up for yourself when you need to. And on your road to continued success, don't sell your soul. You need to live with the decisions you make because when you drive home each day, you need to make sure enough of who you are really remains because that's how you got here in the first place. Now for those dying to know, I do have a cat now and I will be teaching cat training at PetSmart someday. Not yet. <laughs> Congratulations, class of 2019. Today is a great day. Enjoy it and then do great things tomorrow. Thank you.